I believe a lot of these people that lived here wouldn't want to leave this house after they've passed on. Her spirit came back to this house, and maybe that's why she still haunts this place. Did you hear that? No. I just heard movement out here. On the stairs. Dude, that's weird. There could be energy trapped in these walls. If there's an elemental here, can you show us that you're here? How many of you are there? I think that just said many. You're dead. Uh, did you just go there? No. I heard that right there in my head. Right behind you. My God. Are you holding hands with Dave right now? All right, Ryan, we are now in Oberlin, Ohio, in what has been deemed the Inspiration House. And this house was built by the Penfield family many, many, many years ago. Do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, this beautiful and historic mansion was built in 1870 by Isaac and Herbert Penfield. Now, they were a father-son duo of carriage makers. Isaac built the house for his son Herbert and his wife Sarah to have a home to raise their family. Now, as the story goes, that didn't last too long. Tragedy struck. It's very widely speculated that Sarah may have passed away inside the house. They were only able to have one child when they had planned to fill this house with children. A lot of people believe Sarah is one of the many former residents that still haunt this house. From what we read, behind you there, Dave, in the parlor, there was a group of investigators that actually reported seeing a woman peeking down the stairs at them as they were sitting in there. Very bizarre, very weird, and a very interesting start to this haunting. Wow. There's definitely an energy up here. It is creepy up here. Is there any specific place up here that you wanna focus on first? Well, before we go to the back part of the house here, because you can tell from the way that the house is actually built that the original house ends right after this bathroom behind you. But there was a family that lived here the Worcester family actually moved in here in 1901. Two brothers and a sister. You had James Worcester, Harry Worcester, and then you had Roxy Ackleson, who used to be Roxy Worcester. Okay. Now they moved in here when they were much older later in life. Roxy's husband had actually died. He was a doctor. So they all moved in together into this house on South Street here in Oberlin, Ohio. Roxy outlived all of them. James and Harry both died. Roxy continued to live here. Roxy's son even died, and Roxy continued to live here. But eventually Roxy would pass away inside this house of a cerebral brain hemorrhage. And mm. Roxy is one of the people, one of the spirits that they believe to still be here inside the Inspiration House. Very tragic. I mean, she watched everyone that she loved die. But that is the tragedy of old age. Everyone wants to live a long life, but one of the consequences of living a long life is you outlive everyone that you know and love. Mm -hmm. But you can imagine the pain and the sadness that that would cause. And maybe if her spirit isn't feeling that, the residual energy of that time in her life may be trapped within these walls. Yeah, that is very true. All of that energy and all of those emotions and feelings soaked up into these walls and just one of the many pieces of the puzzle to this place. Let's head back yeah. behind you here in this room. 
Wow. So you have three bedrooms up here that we're probably gonna wanna focus on, on this old section of the house. You have what they call the king room, but then there is also this tiny little room that kind of reminds me of like a child's bedroom. That brings me to something that I also read about this place, and that is they see the spirit of a young boy running around this house. <laughs> Now, they don't know if it's a boy from the history of the house or maybe one of the objects that they have downstairs, which we'll see in a minute, may have brought this boy in. But people see this boy. People have heard this boy playing with the toys and moving throughout the house. Hmm. Lilac room, queen bed. Now, after Roxy passed away, the house was then inhabited by James, his daughter, Nellie and she actually had two sons and a daughter in the house as well. So continuing that family aspect, this house is not the normal tragic haunting that you think of. It is that welcoming, warm energy that is so strong that I believe a lot of these people that lived here wouldn't wanna leave this house after they've passed on. But Nellie did pass away in the house and her daughter, Helen, then resided in the house until 1965. And her story is probably one of the more tragic stories associated with this property. Because in 1965, just about a block away from the house, she got into a fatal car. Did you hear that? No, what? I just heard movement out here on the stairs. Hello? Nellie? Helen? Did you hear me telling your story? Because in 1965, just about a block away from the house, she got into a fatal car. Did you hear that? No, what? I just heard movement out here. She got into a fatal car. Did you hear that? No, what? I just heard movement out here. Nellie, Helen, if that was you out there on the stairs, or if that's Sarah, whoever can hear me, my name is Ryan and this is Dave and we're here to speak to you tonight in hopes that you'll tell your story. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, if I lived in this house and I got into a fatal car wreck, like one block over that way, when you're in that kind of traumatic experience and you're hurt like that, even if it's just a little bit before you pass away, what's the one thing that you're gonna want? You're gonna wanna go home so maybe as she was dying, her spirit came back to this house. Right. And maybe that's why she still haunts this place. Into the study. Into the study. The one thing that I love about how beautifully this home is decorated is one of the stories and one of the people they believe may still be here is an artist and art historian named C. Kenneth Dubois. He lived in the house for almost 20 years. The only reason he had to move out of here was when they moved him to a nursing home because his health was failing and he passed away in that nursing home. But that doesn't mean that he didn't come home like we talked about. In that moment, the thought may cross your mind, I just wanna go home, I just wanna go home. It's possible that all his years, 20 years in this house may have brought him back here. All right, down at the end of the hall here to the right is the old mayor's office. Yes, Arden Taylor Dale, and I didn't mention him when we were upstairs. He actually lived here after the Penfields, and he was the mayor of Oberlin. He served almost two terms. Not only did he live in this house, but this room right here was his office, his at-home office. He eventually did pass away of cancer, but his office is now the display room. Oh, wow. That is really cool. This music box, apparently, they don't know if that boy that they see running around this house is attached to this music box, but this music box has been known to play on its own for no reason, and multiple people have experienced this music box playing music when there's no one near it. It just starts playing. So they believe it's from the 1950s or 60s, but it would be very cool if that started playing music tonight while we were here. Yes, it would be. Oh, 
Oh. <laughs> Gotta love basements. You Creepy, do. haunted basements. <clears throat> watch your head, Dave. As if I should be telling you I should be the one who's being told to watch my head. Hey, I don't really have to worry about it. <laughs> oh, wow. I saved a story for last down here because it's not really connected to the house itself, but rather the property. The property itself actually used to be a part of the James Fitch farmstead or homestead and is related to an incident that happened here in Oberlin in September of 1858, 12 years before this house ever existed. There was a man named John Price who had escaped slavery in the South and he was living in Oberlin. And on September the 13th, 1858, slave hunters from Kentucky came here to Oberlin, beat him, abducted him and kidnapped him, trying to take him back to the South. Now, luckily, the citizens of Oberlin banded together. They ended up distracting those slave hunters and even confronting them until they could get John Price away from them. And then he was brought to the James Fitch homestead to be hidden. So this land that is now occupied by the Inspiration House would have been a part of the Fitch property where John Price was hidden before he was taken up to Canada. So you have a lot of historical events that happened here in Oberlin and this house is right at the center of a lot of them. Whether it was here or the land that it sits on was here, there could be energy trapped in these walls. And tonight, we're here at the Inspiration House to see if we can communicate with any of its former residents that are said to still haunt this property. And we're also here to see if we can capture any paranormal activity or paranormal phenomenon on camera. Are you ready to get started, Dave? I am more than ready. We've been wanting to do this one for a while, so let's go knock it out. Let's go, let's set up abandonment. Let's do it. You guys, that music, musical horse is going off right there. That is kind of bizarre. I mean, Dave was setting up this camera and he said that this musical horse right here was going off. I mean, vibration does not set it off. So, kind of strange, but we are getting ready to leave for abandonment. The Inspiration House is wired with cameras. We are ready to leave it completely empty for about an hour to see what happens when this house is completely empty. So we have a camera in here in the display room pointing out through this way and into the other part of the parlor. This is the toy that they say continually goes off and plays music. The one that they say a little boy might be attached to this little music box that looks like a TV. We decided to set up our own music box that he might be able to use or anyone might be able to use a little bit more easily. The paranormal music box is set up right here in the doorway. If anyone walks in here or out of this room, we'll know it. Now, right out here in the hallway, pointing down this direction and up the stairs and into the parlor, we have a camera set up, the Mel meter's sitting on the stairs. We heard the story of Sarah poking her head around or some woman poking her head around the corner and possibly watching the investigators that were down below. So hopefully we can capture that or any sort of paranormal activity within that first floor area. Up on the second floor in the old part of the house, we have an action cam that is set up shooting all three of the bedroom doors on that second floor. We not only have the EDI plus meter up there, but we have motion sensors pointing into each of the two larger bedrooms. So if there's movement in the bedrooms, it'll set off those motion sensors and we will know it because those motion sensors are 
loud. We also have a camera set up in the back part of the house on the second floor. That back part of the house is now considered the creator studio or the creator suite. And we have a camera set up in that little study area with the bookshelves pointing back towards the back bedroom and kitchen area. Let's leave Dave and see. Dave? Yes? <laughs> you ready to leave? I'm more than ready. See what happens when the inspiration house is completely empty. Let's do it. Hit them with it. It's been a minute. All right, here we go, everybody. And before I do this, just know that we have brand new We're Leaving merch, so go get you some. All right. Um, we're leaving! Too dramatic. <laughs> I had to say Jason's line. Anybody from the Penfield family here? Sarah, if you're here, can you walk in, in across the bedroom up there? So we are ready to start the first session here at the Inspiration House. We have multiple pieces of equipment scattered throughout this first floor and multiple cameras to capture anything that might happen. Up above our heads also, we set up again the motion sensors on the second floor. So if anything moves up there in front of those motion sensors, it is going to alarm and we're going to know that we need to go up there and see what's going on. So yes. This is going to be interesting. We're also on this session going to be testing out a brand new program from our friends Amy and Jared over at Amy's Crypt. The creators of Ghost Tube have unleashed a brand new investigative tool that they call Seer. Now it works much like the original Ghost Tube using the magnetometer and the device to pick up fluctuations in magnetic fields that then generate words from a database, but instead of speaking the words, this program runs them through an AI image generator and creates images that are corresponding to those words that are related to those words. So it is their take on almost like psychic mediumship. And I thought what better place to try this out than at the Inspiration House owned by renowned psychic Michelle Belanger. 
You ready, Dave? I'm ready. If you uh, haven't tried out Seer yet, go download it and give it a try. We're about to see what it's like. So if there's anyone here, Sarah, Mary, Nelly, Helen, the mayor, James, anyone who lived in this house who would love to speak to us. My name is Ryan, this is Dave. We're here tonight to help tell your story and we have lots of things that are gonna help do it, but we're trying out this new thing to see if you can use it. To show us an image of your life. Got a guy in a tent. Two guys in a tent. Huh, could it have been the boys from the South? There was one that was a Civil War soldier fought in the Civil War, but that to me could be anything. It's just a tent. What was their name again? Penfield. Penfields, yeah. Are any of the members of the Penfield family here with us? Can you please come out and make yourself known to us? We have a bunch of devices around that you can used to sh What's wrong? I thought I heard like a hissing sound come up from up there. Would you like to do that? You can also sit down in any of these two chairs right here. This chair in front of me or that chair around the corner there. And there's some lights on it that'll turn on. I got a spike up to 0.2 on the metal when I said that. I mean, it's not that much of an EMF fluctuation, but... Sarah, it's speculated on how you actually passed away or whether you even passed away in this house. Could you settle that by showing us an image of it or telling us through the devices? if or and or how you passed away. Oh wow. Peacock feather. On fire. Huh. It's a very random image. <laughs> it is. Don't be afraid to come out and speak with us. We're going to be staying here all night, so we would love to, to know that you're here. What about the mayor? Are you in your office back there? Hmm. What? A woman with a necklace just popped up. It looks like a very elegant and extravagant lady wearing very beautiful earrings and a very beautiful necklace. Sarah, are you showing us an image of what you looked like? I'm gonna walk over here towards the... display room. That's me. Mayor, can we come in? You don't want me to come in? Can you make that horse move again or make that music on the music box that, oh wow. I see what looks like, I don't even know what that is. Let me see. A saloon maybe? It kind of looks like a courtroom, which is interesting. Is it a courtroom? I don't know, it could have been a courtroom. Is that the bell? We were just in there for how long? A minute. Footsteps. Yeah. Is that upstairs? Yeah. Sarah, was that you? you? 
Listen to how cool that music is. Are you sitting there in that chair? If you'd like one of us to sit down here and have a conversation with you, can you move the chair? That'll let me know. You might have heard our device make some beeping sounds. That's okay. That's what it's supposed to do. It won't hurt you. Hmm. Whoa. What? We've got an old time gentleman and lady sitting in front of a fireplace. Oh wow. They're sitting together in the chair. Are you showing us what your life was like here, Sarah? You and Herbert? If that's what you're showing us, can you set off one of these, one of these lights? Is the little boy here? The one that they say people always see? And the one that always sets off this music? Wow. If that's who's here lighting the lights up, is the little boy, can you light it up again? Just go over and grab a hold of it or knock it down. I want to hear what that music box sounds like right there. That's very weird. It's like a shadow of a little boy? Yeah. Dude. It's like a shadow of a little kid. Okay, that's weird. If this is the little boy... Is this little boy that's here, did you live here, or are you a, are you, did you come with one of these items, like this box? With this toy? The strange thing to me is at both times, when the mail went off, is after we left that room. It's very bizarre. It is. Let's go in here and sit down on the couch. Maybe they'll feel more comfortable if we're sitting. Okay. As compared to wandering around. Maybe they'd be more likely to talk. Okay. All right, we're just gonna sit down with you now, if that's okay. Would you, do you feel more comfortable now that we're just sitting? Dude. Oh, wow. We haven't even talked about that. We haven't even mentioned that. When we were doing reading on the history and on the claims of activity here at the Inspiration House, it says on their write-up about it that they believe that there could possibly be some sort of elemental here inside the Inspiration House. That's wild. Very weird that that word came through. Yeah. If there's an elemental here, can you show us that you're here? Maybe give us an idea of where you are or what you want? <laughs> wow. What? Come on, just a little bit more. Get as close to it as you can for me. Is this still recording? Whoa. That is insane. Was it recording? I don't know, it just now started recording again. That wasn't recording the whole time, I swear. But it's recording now, it caught that. Whoa. Thank you very much.
See, that's not too hard to do, is it? I'm going to get up just for a minute. You can keep going. Don't stop on Dave's account. Thank you. Sorry, I don't want to miss this just in case that thing goofs up. Thank you for doing that for us. So, you understand that we're not here to hurt you, right? Is this the little boy? If this is the little boy that likes to play with the music, if you walk through the room to the left of Dave, down the hallway, and if you walk through the middle of that room, there's a box that will also play music. It's a lot easier to get it to play music than the other one, I'm sure. Could you try that out for us? What do you think, Dave? You ready to move some of these cameras around and get started with the, an SLS sweep upstairs? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go ahead and get the SLS cameras set up and let's do an SLS sweep of the second floor. Let's do it. Let's do it. SLS, here we come. Millimeter was just going off. Interesting. Which is the only device to go off. So far tonight, I mean, this is just the second session, so. Yeah. Let's go down and get the SLS camera and see what, see what happens. Okay. All right, let's do this. All right, Ryan, you ready to start this SLS sweep? I am. We actually have this whole first floor wired with motion sensors, just like we did the second floor during that last session. And we already have two cameras rolling upstairs, so. And a huge thank you to our friend Pam for letting us borrow her SLS. Let's head up. We're coming upstairs now to take your picture like we talked about earlier. Is there anyone that would like a portrait? Sarah? Stand right here. <laughs> Never mind, you don't I, I don't want to take your I don't want to get your portrait in the bathroom. <laughs> Just kidding. Stand right here for me. Let's step into this. That's me. Sarah. Mary. Helen, Nellie, James. See Kenneth Dubois, Herbert. Yeah. We're gonna do some old fashioned ghost box here, y'all. Yes. Is there anyone here with us? Whose voice did we just hear? Whoa, 
We're fine, how are you? Can I ask who we're speaking to? Ryan is holding a radio, and that's how you can communicate with us. Just use it like a microphone. Please tell us your name. Yes. Yes what? What is your name? Nothing in here. Hello? Is C. Kenneth Dubois here? Mary, are you still here? We'd love to hear your story. Can you come? Can you come close to us and tell us how long you lived in this house? Mary, are you still here? Mary, are you still here? Can you tell me what happens after we die? Can you tell us if there's anything beyond this life? was a woman's voice. I don't know what that said. It sounded like it said love or something like that. Love something. Do you love being here? Who is this woman that we're speaking to? So we know your name. My name's Ryan. That's Dave. What's yours? that same voice. Mary, is that you? You said you loved something. Does Mary love art? Whoa. But it's a it sound like it's a Dave there. Really? That's Dave there. Can you say my name? How many of you are there? I think that just said many. Oh, really? How many? Give us a number if you can. That gave me chills. That's a lot. How, why are there 20 people here? Did you all used to live here? Yes. Did you hear that? I went, yes. Does everyone that ever lives in this house come back here after they pass away? Yes. 
love again. Can you go stand right next to Dave? Here, come stand beside me. Give me a hug. Whoa. What? Literally one just appeared beside you, right beside you, reaching out and grabbing your hand, dude. Really? I swear. It's touching. It just tried to touch your... It just tried to touch your face. <laughs> you can... You can do whatever you want. Are you right there beside Dave? Do you like Dave? It's whole, it's, it just grabbed your hand, man. Really? Yeah, and when you pulled away, it kept reaching for it. Sorry, I'll put my hand back out. Are you holding hands with Dave right now? It's okay, you're allowed. Still there? Mm-hmm. It's like reaching out and touching your hand. Oh, it just disappeared. It just disappeared. Out of nowhere, it just vanished. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you so much for standing there and holding my hand and letting me know that you're here. That was... That was really cool. That that was probably one of the coolest SLS figures that we've caught in a long time. That's awesome. Thank you for doing that. And what's weird is, is we, kept, we got the word love and it just seems like they love, like it was just, it, the, the whole time, I can't wait for you to see that footage because the whole time it was like reaching for your hand and then, and then when you pull your hand away, it would try and reach out and touch your face. Oh, wow. And then you put your hand back and then it would immediately like go back to trying to touch your hand. Oh, that's creepy. I mean, just because I can't see you, that that's a little bit creepy to me, but I appreciate you. Is that what you're all about? Are you all about love here? Ryan and I both come with respect only to talk to you. Can you please tell me who that was that was trying to grab Dave's hand? Give me your name, please. Ooh, I got chills on my left side. Or excuse me, my right side. Like over here, this just got really cold. Are you standing beside Ryan? Are you right in between us? Look, look at this. All you gotta do is try that and it'll let us know you're here. Dude, this is, this is gonna sound so weird, but I feel like someone's touching the left, like the left part of my neck. Really? Yeah, can you, and just see, like over here is where I feel it now. Are you right here beside me? Whoa. Clear as day. Clear as day. Thank, Thank you. you. Is this Sarah or Nellie or Mary or Helen? When we woke up this morning, we thought we were going to be investigating a different location. We didn't know we were coming to the Inspiration House tonight. Did you know we were going to be coming here? I don't really feel whatever it was over there now. You got it? Yes. Can you stand in the doorway there and let me take your picture? Whoa. That was me. Oh, was it? Yeah, I hit my leg on that. Oh, okay, you bumped the table. Yeah, my bad. What? Did you just go, Dave? No. Mark it, I heard that right here in my... I'm 
tell anyone. I heard that right there in my head. Right behind you? It was between us. You heard that, and I was running the spirit box, so I didn't hear it. But you heard someone say your name, and then the mel meter started going off right here behind me. And that was not me bumping into it or moving near it or anything. What? Did you just go, Dave? No. Are you upset because you because Dave's walking out of the room? Do you want Dave to stay in here? I don't know. That was that was plain as day. I hope the camera captured it or your audio captured it. Me too. Because I had the spirit box going right beside me, so I'm not sure whether it would have picked it, whether. I know my mic wouldn't have picked it up. Right. You know what's very odd? I expected that this front part of the house that is the oldest would be the most active on the second floor. But we haven't captured anything up here. All of the activity and that amazing moment with the SLS camera and a Dave heard a very clear disembodied voice saying his name. That all happened in the back part of the house, which as far as I can tell, looking at the architecture that was built at a later date, but it just goes to show you. Just because something's older doesn't mean that's where the activity is going to be. Yeah. In a place this historical, in a place that's so charged full of energy like the Inspiration House, it could happen in any part of the building. I don't know how I feel about Whatever the figure was reaching out, trying to grab my hand, I did ask for that. I asked for a hug. It's, it's, it's interesting, you know, that that happened when I asked that, but nothing else has happened from the SLS, you know? I think Dave has a friend. <laughs> what do you think we stick him in the basement alone with the spirit box to do an Estes session? See if someone wants to come talk to him while I ask questions. You think you'd like that, Dave? Uh, I don't know. As long as there's no spiders, <laughs> then I'm good. Then I'm good. Uh, let's give it a try. Let's see what happens. Let's do it. All right. So we decided that we were going to do a session in the basement, but instead of just doing a normal session, we are going to have Dave perform an Estes Method spirit box session, but do it a little differently. Instead of me being in the room with him asking questions, I'm gonna sit upstairs in the parlor while Dave is performing the Estes down here because I wanna see if the questions that I ask upstairs correlate with his answers down here in the basement. So maybe some of them may even answer me directly. Do the floors and earshot and other things that limit human abilities actually apply to the paranormal and the and the strange communication that we deal with. So this is gonna be interesting. Are you ready to sit down here alone, Dave, and listen to that? I'm ready. We also have the REM pod back here behind me. So if anything goes off or anything sneaks up behind Dave, maybe they'll trigger that. Who knows? We will see. So I'm gonna grab that camera from the kitchen as I go through, and I'm gonna head to the parlor. Okay. <sighs> I'll let you know when I'm there. Okay. Turning off the lights. Rolling on ghost tube. I'm also going to roll on ghost tube because I want to see if maybe what I, what answers I get through here correlate with whatever Dave says downstairs. So let's give it a shot. Okay, ready when you are, Mr. Gear. All right, I'm gonna put on my headphones okay. now. All right, Dave is downstairs. You remember Dave, you held his hand upstairs. You said his name upstairs. He's now alone in the basement. And he has these things on his ears. They may look strange to you, but they're attached to a box, the same box that you were talking through up there. And I would love it if you could answer my questions through him.
Eight. Is that how old you are? Is this the little boy? Or are there eight of you here? My name is Ryan. If you don't remember, you didn't hear me, and that's Dave down there, if you've never met him either. If there's someone in the basement that we haven't talked to yet. Can you tell us your name? Sarah, I heard you like peeking at people down the stairs. Are you up there? Peace. Are you at peace? Three. Hmm. Eight, three. We're here to learn about your life and to let you speak to us and to whoever would want to hear your story. In the room? Are you in the room with me or are you in the room with Dave? Which room are you in? I'd love to come find you. Frightened. You don't have to be fr- You don't have to be frightened. That just went off. Was that you that did that? It was not. Are you serious? I just asked if that was them that touched that and it said it was not. <laughs> wow. That is about as a direct of an answer as you can get. Hey, was that you? Smile. N no, that wasn't me that did that. Do you know who did that? I'm something or other. What are you? But do you mind if I ask you some somewhat personal questions? Seven. Yes. Well, what I was wondering is after after you pass away, can you stay wherever you want? Is that a choice that you have? Is that a choice that you made? Are you happy here? Is there something- that Prisoner. You... Prisoner. Is there, is there a spirit or entity here that doesn't allow you to speak freely? That punishes you if you say the wrong thing? It's becoming very cold down here. Hello? Male voice? Hello? Who is this elemental? This entity? This energy that people pick up on? I'm not even quite sure how an elemental works. Water. Water. Is that how the elemental got here with water? K. Yes or no? Is that how that el is that how that entity got here? Is through water? Lower your voice. Excuse me. 
talk quieter. <laughs> I've never had that come through before. Do you need me to talk more quietly? Now, how many fingers am I holding up? Can you go tell Dave this number? Satchel. Yeah. Stay with me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no way, that is so. It's us. <laughs> that was creepy. Do you want me to stay with you? I'm going to be staying here tonight. Excuse me, lower my voice. I'm going to be staying here tonight. How long do you want me to stay? You're dead. You're dead. Me? I'm dead? That's a little creepy, but am I the one that's dead and you're the one that's talking to me? I once heard this theory that there's multiple realities and dimensions and that we each continue to exist on within the reality and dimension that we survive and move on and continue, but there are, there are realities and there are dimensions and there are situations where we have passed on. Do those ever overlap? causing paranormal activity. I just heard something. Sounds like shuffling. I'm not sure where you are, but I feel like something approaching me. It's not me. Go talk to Dave. Just move that camera so I know for a fact that it's getting that mel meter. I'm gonna walk over and start heading down to Dave, but I'm not going to pull him out just yet. Going down? My God. As I just said, I'm going down to the basement. <sighs> Dave just heard going down. Yes, I am going down. Follow me down and maybe you can talk to Dave a little better. Coming down. Tell Dave that I'm behind him. Again, I feel somebody or something approaching. He has good senses, doesn't he? Come over here. better I know one thing what is that what is that one thing can you knock something over knock something over upstairs or down here anywhere hey Dave Oh wow, he's under. I do not want to scare the shit out of him. He does not even know that I'm down here. Dave. Ah! Sorry. <laughs> 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 I 
I'm sorry, I didn't know how else to get you out. I told the camera, I was like, if I tap him on the shoulder, he's gonna freak out even. <laughs> You're gonna freak out. <laughs> oh. But you were under, and I'm like, I have no other way of pulling you out. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Whew, that scared the crap out of me. Well, basically, I figured you've been under now for like 35 minutes. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, it's probably about time. But I'm going to go ahead and shut this off here. And then you do have very astute senses because the first time you said you felt like someone was approaching. Yeah. I was upstairs. The second time you said you felt like someone was approaching, that was me coming into the room through the door. Oh, really? Yeah. I told the camera, I was like, he has very astute senses. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I've definitely felt it twice. So. Yeah. The first one wasn't me. What second... do you mean? What do you mean? All right, Justin Bieber, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> At this point, we've covered the entire house. We've caught some very cool evidence. Um, do you want to gather this stuff up? And then we'll set up a couple cameras while we sleep. Yeah. And see if anything happens while we are sleeping. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get ready for bed. Let's do it. All right, everyone. It is well early into the morning. I don't even know what time it is. We have to sleep here, so who knows what's gonna happen while we are asleep, or maybe even while we are falling asleep. So what better place to set up cameras to see what happens? Now I'm here in the front bedroom in the front of the house, but remember in the back of the house, Dave had a figure on the SLS camera that looked like it was grabbing his hand and trying to touch his face. So I wanted to make sure that he took that bedroom. It's been an interesting night here in the Inspiration House. And I'm glad that we got to come here and finally check it out. Uh, but for the rest of the night, it is bedtime. I'm gonna leave this camera rolling. I'm gonna leave a rim pod set up and uh, see what happens while we're asleep. See if the spirits of the Inspiration House are still active while we are asleep. Let's see, we'll see if anything happens, but I'm gonna go get ready for bed finish everything up, and then I'm gonna roll on this camera again when it's time for us to fall asleep. Let's see what happens. All right, well, it is time for bed. It is almost 6 a.m. here at the Inspiration House, so I'm going to set this audio recorder right over here by the door with the mail meter and try and fall asleep here. We'll see what happens. All right, well, it is daytime, it is morning, it is about 12 o'clock noon here at the Inspiration House and we have officially finished. What a really cool place to get to even just spend the night, let alone investigate the paranormal. Yeah, we had a lot of very interesting things happen during the investigation and I'm excited to go back and see what happened overnight while we were asleep. Maybe something happened there. Yeah, maybe it did. We're not sure about it, but I will tell you what, the coolest part of the night, I think, for me, was whenever that figure popped up on the SLS camera beside you on the second floor, 
and it looked like they were trying to hold your hand. It looked like they were trying to grab a hold of you, something. It was very weird. It just shows that the Inspiration House here still has energies and spirits, and it still has people that are wanting to contact and interact with people. Yes. So, but we 100% recommend staying at the Inspiration House because this was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, super unique place. Definitely should come and check it out. But you know what else you should do? Make sure if you like this video, hit that like button down below because that helps us out. It helps share this video out to a wider audience. Also, make sure if you're new here, you subscribe to the channel, turn on bell notifications so you never miss a video. And also don't forget, leave us a comment down below about what you thought of our investigation of the Inspiration House or if you saw anything that we missed. And also brand new recently is our new merch site. Check out ParanormalQuestMerch.com for any Paranormal Quest merch needs that you'd like. If you want to rock a shirt that says we're leaving from abandonment, that says Paranormal Quest, that has an animation of Dave and I as zombies, hats, beanies, stickers, candles, to help set the mood for your spooky Saturdays with Paranormal <laughs> Quest. So, thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time.